Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you are all doing well. I am back on the foils, guys, because I am just so in love with them. Now, if you saw the video a few videos back, I used some foils that I had ordered online from Natasha MP from Resin Supplies Den. She sent me over a whole load of images and this was my favorite. This is an absolute beauty of an image. And I said to Natasha, now that I know I love them, I need more and I would like them to fit this specific coaster mold. So if you're interested in any foils at all, then do hit up Natasha MP over at Resin Supplies Den. Now the molds, I had two choices of molds. I've got the round coaster mold or I've got the cauldron mold. The cauldron mold is beautiful. You would have seen that last Saturday on the collaboration video, but truly, really this was the mold I had them specifically made for I told Natasha I've got this mold they are 10 centimeter diameter coasters and please fit it so basically she went into her however I don't know how you do it how do you do it oh um, she went in and she created them specifically to fit my mold so that is something she's willing to do as well really happy to do that for you guys so if you're interested hit her up and yes the resin I'm using for the base is the two hour epoxy from apex at just for you online and I'm going with purples now the reason I'm choosing these colors again a Halloween but b they were my favorite results from the pendant molds that you would have seen a few videos back now because this is a multi-layer project again so we're talking three layers the two hour cure epoxy really is perfect for this it is the base layer it's fast it's gonna save me waiting days before i can pour the next layer it's just a perfect resin for a base layer in a project like this so i've split my resin into two and i didn't really want much the first color i'm using is an absolutely stunning purple from resin pro it's a deep intense like super intense purple i had to add more powder to get the color i was looking for but how stunning is this color again this is from resin pro not sponsored purchased myself it is just such a stunner it really is my probably my favorite purple out of every mica powder that I've ever had the joy of using it's my favorite now I am just using a bit of the alcohol spray over the top here just to spray them for two reasons to get rid of bubbles and also to help that mica powder dance together and give me some kind of nice little pattern this mica powder here is another beauty it is a purple mica powder from the color cottage but sadly the color cottage are no longer in business nobody's been able to find them for quite a while now so really and truly whatever mica powders you have or whatever color scheme you want to go for that works it all works the reason i'm liking the mica powder again i've said it in a previous video and that is just because mica powder has so much dimension it has so much depth so so pretty compared to block opaque block opaque colors have their place they have their time they have their use but mica powder offers you a little bit of something, a little bit of magic in the background. And again, these are just background colors. Now I am hitting them with my heat gun. If you are interested in resin, I know so many of you here are new to resin. I have Amazon storefronts down below and everything you will need is down there. Like heat tools I use, molds that I use, tools in general, everything you will find down below in my Amazon storefronts if you want to get started. Okay, it was time to cut the foils. Now, I have sped this section up because it was long. I was trying real hard not to scratch the foils because I scratched one and I was really sad about it. Um, but yes... I'm wearing gloves because of that. I wanted to really, really protect what foils I didn't scratch. I'm going to be using my silicon tool to smush the resin around. Now, this resin here is the Let's Resin Super Crystal Clear resin. And I don't want much. I just want enough to lay down my foils and make sure that those foils are for yours. <laughs> lay down my foils and have enough resin to smush them in like press them in firmly making sure that there's no air underneath and a little bit of that resin will come up and over the sides of the foils just to make sure that they are well and truly embedded in the resin before we do the top coat again just another blast with the heat gun 
before I lay them down and that's really to try and get rid of any potential air bubbles that might be in the resin that I'm not actually seeing right now just to you know make it as crystal clear as possible guys when I tell you <laughs> The excitement I get when I see foils, I don't know what it is. I feel like a child in a sweet shop. Like, there is something about them. I really want to make my own foils. Like, I really want to make my own foils. I've been watching videos. I don't have any of the... <laughs> I don't have any of the equipment. So, I know that you need a laser printer. I used to think laser printers were like £500, but they're not at all they're totally affordable so there are things that are going on my Christmas list do you know what I mean guys and I just want to try I want to try um but yeah until you have the right equipment to do things that is that's when you need other people who know what they're doing to get you the things that you need um but yeah I don't have I don't have anything it's definitely on my to-do list or at least it's on my wish list I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing it but how incredible would it be to make your own foils as well like yeah in the meantime Natasha is my girl and Natasha <laughs> is amazing at what she does so in the meantime I will be relying heavily on purchasing my foils from Natasha over on Resin Supplies Den so here you see me I've laid my foils down you saw me kind of bend but not bend bend them in, in the middle so that they go in slowly and the resin kind of pulls them in real gentle um and this way we're not just throwing them in flat risking kind of trapping air bubbles underneath and now i'm just using my silicon town silicon town what is happening to me <laughs> my silicon tool <laughs> to drown them so basically I'm smushing out the resin from the center outwards and then the resin is coming up and over the foils making sure that they're inside the resin I hope I'm hoping that makes sense <laughs> I don't know my brain has just thrown me off with that random word that just came in um yeah it's a slow process um I have sped little bits up for you so that you don't have to you know fall asleep whilst watching my video but it, it really is important at this point to get them foils well and truly in and under the resin so that when it comes to the top coat there's going to be no floating they're not going to be like they were a few videos back when I did my pendants and they were literally all curled up inside the resin this is an important step so I did hit it with my heat gun and this is what they are looking like I cannot get enough I cannot get enough say it again of this design I just love it especially on the black now now that we've got it on that dark 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 purple looks like black I'm loving it even more the darker the background for me now the better and I know this because I've done a couple of projects and you kind of learn what you really really love so again the top coat is going to be exactly the same resin that I used for that second coat and that is the let's resin crystal clear 24 hour epoxy so this kind of project really is a labor of love if if you're doing something like this you have to allow yourself the time um, it's definitely a two-day project definitely um, it might have even been uh, you know a two and a half to three day project depending on what resin you use all I'm doing here is pouring a little bit of resin in the middle blasting it with my heat gun heating up that little bit of resin so that when I pour the rest of the resin it's so hot in there already that that's going to help all of the resin just clear all the bubbles and all will be well with the world and beautiful but yes I do the same to all four and it's very similar to chameleon powders when you pour resin over chameleon powders and you see that chameleon powder totally pop you would have seen that I can't even remember was that Monday's video the tea light holder from Dennis at Resin Supplies Den it makes it pop and it does the same with the foils it magnifies them the resin becomes this beautiful magnifying thing and everything is just so much more magnified <laughs> do I say the same word three times in a sentence but yeah here they are all done and yeah I just went round with my um micro brush just on the inside to try and dislodge any bubbles that might be stuck in and around the inside edge of this mold and I love them I absolutely love them 
Now, I've said it in a few videos, uh, when I grow up, I'm going to have flat surfaces. We had a complete disaster of a spillover on the left. Now, the two on the right, not so bad. The one on the left, it was like, it. honestly, it was in a different postcode. I don't know what happened there because the rest were fine. But the main culprit is human error and wonky surfaces. Human error being that I poured just a little bit too much resin. Sometimes when you're going for a dome like this, oh my gosh, perfection. Perfection. You can see where I unfortunately scratch the foil in a couple of places. Just be careful with your foils. Um, when you're going for a little bit of a dome, you want that stunning domed finish. Sometimes you get a little bit leery, you get a little bit cocky and you put just one or two drops too much and it looks fine. It looks absolutely fine. You walk away, you come back, it's fine and you wake up the next day and it is all over the place. So yeah, you really do have to be careful. But listen, I'm keeping it as real as I can possibly keep it, guys, because at this point I feel like absolutely none of my videos go perfectly well. And that's okay. Handmade with love, not perfection. But look at this. Absolutely beautiful. I also know, I've realised that I say the word absolutely quite a lot. So I'm really going to try moving forward to, to, to um, minimise my vocabulary and repetitive words that I say a lot. Um, now I'm struggling. <laughs> Now I'm struggling to get these apart. I did have to use my craft blade. I was just thinking I could just rip them, but the resin was way cured. So it really was a tricky one to get this apart. The best thing for me right now is my craft blade. My deburring tool simply would not cut through resin this thick at this point, And I didn't really want to, you know, use it for that. But a simple swipe with the craft blade or your exacto knife will carve that off quite happily. The problem now is there's quite a rough raw edge on this coaster. Really and truly, I've said it before in previous videos, when you mess up the sides like I do a lot, then there's two ways around it. Either kind of like keep them <laughs> and never sell them or sell it as a second. You could sell it as a second if you are thinking of going to a craft market. There's three ways, actually. The third way would be to spend time fixing it. So you could sand it down to within an inch of its life, all the way up to 10,000 grit and bring it back to shiny. And actually, I guess the fourth way would be sand it down with a brutal grit, like a 400, sand the whole thing, all the sides and the top, and then give them a flood coat. So there's actually quite a few ways that you can rescue these coasters if you are thinking of selling them on. It is important if you're selling to have the best finish <laughs> or sell them as seconds. I feel like everything on my shelf in my craft room right now <laughs> would be in the seconds pile. That's fine because, you know, it all adds up, doesn't it? But yeah, that is all you would need to do to fix these up. And that is what I did. I also did in the end run them over a 1000 grit just to make them super smooth. But they're definitely not shiny now. So that's something to bear in mind. I love them. I absolutely love them. I love the purple. I love both purples, but I do prefer the darker, darker one that looks black in some lights. I love the foils. There's no getting away from it, guys. I am foil obsessed. Now I need to start looking at Christmas foils because ooh, you know I'm going to need to. I hope you have enjoyed this video, despite my brain being on holiday right now. And yes, I appreciate you all so, so much for being here. If you are interested in the foils, do hit up Natasha MP from the Facebook page Resin Supplies Den. And yeah, let me know in the comment section what you think. And if you have enjoyed it, please give me a like. That is something I never remember to ask, but it is the most crucial part to growing on YouTube is actually having somebody like your video tells YouTube that this video needs to be pushed out. So I would really massively appreciate that as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.